Hello summoners and welcome to another pro guides video. I'm Crumbs and today's video will be our guide to Udir, the spirit walker. Usually we cover new champions and those getting VGUs before their release, but in this case it's a good thing we waited. He had a bumpy landing, but once he stabilized Udir was super broken. With his AP, Bruiserish build being way too consistently high impact in every game, whether he was play top or jungle. As a result, Riot shipped some changes that completely altered how he should be played. So any guide that came out based on his VGU release is basically obsolete. Now he's a bit riskier but comes with a higher ceiling for carrying as a damage dealer. Something important to note is that as of right now, top lane Udir is really, really bad, even after recent buffs aimed at helping him out there. So this guide is going to be all about Udir jungle. Before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. In case you aren't familiar with Udir's kit, we'll start out by talking about what he does. His passive is Bridge Between. It's 2022, so of course, even a basic champ like Udir is gonna have a two-part passive these days. The first part is Awakened Spirit. Udir has no ultimate ability and instead has four basic abilities that each incur a 1.5 second global cooldown, which is affected by ability haste. Each ability grants a stance that empowers his next two basic attacks and switching stances will replace the empowered attacks from the previous stance. Periodically, after Udir enters a stance, he can cast it again at no cost after 0.25 seconds to awaken it, refreshing the cooldown and empowering the stance with an additional effect. The second part of the passive is Monk Training. After casting an ability, Udir empowers his next two basic attacks within 4 seconds to gain 30% bonus attack speed and refund 5% of Awakened Spirit's total cooldown. While functionally entirely different from his old one, this new passive still maintains that stance dancey feel that encourages constantly spamming your buttons to swap between forms. But rather than just spamming to keep up stacks of movement speed and attack speed, now you're cycling through your forms to refresh the cooldown of Awaken. Utilizing this new mechanic properly is what gives the new Udir just a bit of skill expression. Where you just perma spammed whatever was off cooldown with the old Udir, now you want to Awaken the right ability in different situations. Udir's Q is Wildling Claw. Udir enters Claw Stance, empowering his next two basic attacks to gain 50 bonus range and deal bonus physical damage. Additionally, Udir gains bonus attack speed and deals bonus physical damage on hit for 4 seconds. When recast with Awaken, Udir gains an additional 20 to 70% bonus attack speed. The empowered attacks deal an additional percentage of the target's maximum health as bonus physical damage and strike with lightning, dealing an additional percentage of their health as magic damage. The lightning also chains to nearby visible enemies and can hit the same target multiple times. After his recent changes, this is Udir's bread and butter for dealing damage. Even its basic cast does quite a bit of DPS once you have your cord build done but the Awakened is absolutely crazy, allowing you to pretty much one-shot squishy champions you get your claws on. In most cases, this is the ability you want to use your Awakened cast on. Udir's W is Iron Mantle. Udir enters Mantle's stance, empowering his next two basic attacks to gain lifesteal and heal him for a percent of his health on hit. Additionally, Udir grants himself a shield for four seconds, when recast with Awaken, Udir increases the shield strength, stacking with the remaining shield from the first case and heals himself over the course of 4 seconds. In addition to that, his empowered attacks gain double the lifesteal and percentage based healing. This ability may feel like a filler in your rotation, but it can be pretty impactful. In the jungle, it provides a lot of sustain, and while you normally want to Awaken with Q to do damage in fights, an Awaken W can give you a huge clutch heal, so don't be afraid to use it when you're in danger of going down. Udir's E is Blazing Stampede. 
Udir enters Stampede Stance, empowering his basic attacks to have an uncancelable windup and pounce on the target to stun them for 0.75 seconds. This cannot affect the same target more than once every few seconds. Additionally, Udir becomes ghosted and gains bonus movement speed for 5 seconds, which decays to 30% effectiveness for 1.5 seconds. When recast with Awaken, Udir gains 75 bonus attack range, additional movement speed, and he becomes immune to crowd control for 1.5 seconds. This gives Udir his ability to get onto and stick to targets. The Awakened cast is situationally really good for getting onto targets that are pretty far away from you or those that have some sort of ability to disengage your chase. It's worth noting that it won't break you out of CC that's already on you like an Olaf ult. You need to use it before this CC hits you. Udir's R is Wingborn Storm. Udir enters Storm Stance, empowering his next two basic attacks to deal magic damage to nearby enemies. Additionally, Udir summons a blizzard around himself that deals magic damage to slow enemies in it. When recast with Awaken, Udir ends the blizzard that surrounds him and summons a new glacial storm for 4 seconds that is able to move on its own. His empowered attacks now deal their damage to all enemies within that storm. The storm follows the closest nearby visible target and applies the same effect as the original blizzard, but also deals bonus magic damage equal to a percentage of the target's max HP. This ability helps clear the jungle quickly, with the Awakened cast being especially good on multi-target camps, especially early game. As the game goes on, it falls off, since you'll be building AD and only be putting one point in it. You should pretty much never use the Awakened cast when fighting other camps. Okay, now that we've laid everything out, let's do a quick recap. Udir's new kit works pretty similarly to his old one, with his abilities all still being auto-attack modifiers. He's a simple right-click champion that pretty much anyone can master. Being mechanically easier to play than most other champs lets you focus on other parts of the game, like pathing and macro, which can play a big part in helping you climb the ladder. That said, they did modernize his kit and added in little bits of skill expression, like choosing which form to awaken in what situation. Now let's take a look at how to actually play Udir, starting with his early game. Udir has always been one of the fastest clearing champs in the game, and that hasn't changed with his VGU. He melts the beefier single target camps with his Q, while R allows you to mow down the multi-target ones. His fast clear speed is backed with really strong 1v1 power early on, so you can not just outpace your foe, but actively bully them, easily taking away Scuttle and even invading them in their jungle. When it comes to ganking, his point and click stun and relatively high damage makes it pretty easy to punish over extended foes. The most important thing with Udir is getting an early lead, so focus on ganking the lanes that have the best chance of actually getting you fed. With how quickly he takes camps, it's also really good to counter jungle when you get the chance, so be proactive on that front. Lastly, while Udir is one of the better junglers for taking dragons, able to easily solo them even in the early stages of the game, obviously don't just run to it the second it spawns, but if you know the enemy team lacks vision and their jungler is on the top side of the map, then go for it. Moving into the mid game, it's important that you keep up your farm game with Udir. Remember, you're playing him as a carry, not a tanky utility bot. If you fall behind, you're pretty much useless. With that in mind, don't be afraid to pick up waves either. I'm not saying to go around the map vacuuming up all the gold off your team, but if no one's around, it's okay to take a wave or two. Just be sure that you manage the waves properly and shove it all the way out when you do this so it bounces back. When it comes to fighting in the mid and later stages of the game, it's worth noting that the AD build we're focusing on today does not do nearly as well in 5v5s as the tanky AP build. Unless the rest of your team has a ton of engage and AoE CC, it's probably safer to avoid fighting 5v5 team fights and instead looking to make picks or take smaller 2v2 and 3v3 skirmishes. Now to finish things off, let's take a look at the build you'll want for Udir. For your abilities, take Q at level 1, R at level 2, W at level 3, and finally E at level 4. With all of them unlocked, you'll then max Q first, E second, and then put the rest of your points in W. For your runes, run Press the Attack, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Celerity, and Water Walking. 
If the enemy team is crowd control heavy, you could swap out Alacrity for Tenacity and even change the secondary runes for Conditioning and Unflinching. The stats runes you want are Attack Speed, Adaptive Force and Health. For your items, Hailblade is actually the better starter item in the majority of cases. Ember Knife may sound good because you want to duel people so badly, but Udyr already does a ton of damage and his big weakness is being kited. Blue Smite gives you an easier time reaching foes, especially when Ghost is down. That said, if the enemy team is full of melee scrappy champions that you don't need to run down, then Ember Knife may just be a better pickup. The first item you'll be going for is your mythic, Trinity Force. After that, you'll want to grab tier 2 boots. In almost all cases, boots of swiftness are the best option, although very rarely, either Steel Caps or Merc Treads might give more value. After that, you'll want to finish up your core by grabbing Blade of the Ruined King. At this point, you have all the damage you need to easily duel pretty much anyone in the game, and can even one-shot squishy targets if you get onto them with your double Q. Now, your last three items will almost always be Dead Man's Plate, Death Stance, and Force of Nature. That's generally the order you should build them in, but in games where the enemy champions aren't kiting you and the movement speed from Dead Man's Plate is not as needed, you can get Death Stance first instead. You can also swap out Death Stance altogether for another tank item, like Thorn Mail, Frozen Heart, or Spear Visage. That is, if you trust your team to do the damage and want to be a better frontliner. And that about wraps things up for our guide to Udyr, the Spirit Walker. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this gives you a really good starting point for learning him. Remember, if you want some more in-depth tutorials, you can always hit up our coaches over at ProGuides.com. And one last thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord. The link for that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you as part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one. But until then, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.